Welcome to Sutishai Life English. Thailand is facing what the government calls a population crisis. Among the serious issues are our rapidly aging society and also negative birth rates and shrinking workforce. This huge challenge, if left unchecked and unresolved, could seriously destabilize society and have far-reaching consequences on the country's social, economic, and political futures. How does the Thai government plan to approach this unprecedented danger? Here I'm with Minister for Social and Hu Human Society Security Development, Kun Top Varawut Silapa Acha. Hi, Minister Varawut. Yeah, we are talking about a population crisis which is facing Thailand. You have just been assigned to supervise this ministry, which in Thai is called the which of course yes. directly has direct impact on social development and human security. And now you suddenly come face to face with a population crisis. How serious is it? This is a very big time bomb. Um, it's uh, previously in my previous ministry, I used to address the problem of climate change. Ah. Now with climate change, we're talking about a timeline of 50 or 60 years from now, mm -hmm. but uh, population crisis, age society, as well as the population crisis, uh, mm -hmm. we are going to be hit with this problem in less than a decade from now. Eight oh. years, nine years, something like that, along that time frame, we will get the full impact of it. Mm -hmm. Well, we have entered an aging society. And at the same time, birth rates are shrinking. Workforce yes. is also diminishing. Do you see this sort of uh, three big issues facing us at the same time, all at the same time? Yes. We need to look at this problem in the short term, medium term, and the long term. Mm. Um, because in the short term, we cannot in time increase the population. Uh, for example, in the past five or six years, our mm. birth rate has fallen from a million down to less than 500,000. Uh -huh. So much that since um, 2019, mm. Mm. Yes. Until Lan has lost the 500,000 populations from mm. 66 million, 500,000. Now we only have about nearly 66 million, just over 66 million. Mm -hmm. And uh, the birth rate since uh, uh, before I was born, I was born in 1973. Um, okay. The year I was born, uh, I have friends and people, you know, was born around that time, over a million people per year. So 1974, 1973, 1972, give or take, we have over a million people per year uh, being born. But today, we have about 500,000. And if the trend continues like this without any, any remedy, um, in about 50 or 60 years time, the population of Thailand is going to fall from about 66 down to about 32 or 31 million. We will wow. be halved. Wow. In 10 years time? No, in about 50 years time. 50, 50 years. But about 10 years yeah. from now, what would that, the picture look like? Well, in 10 years from now, if thing continues like this, one, we will not have uh, enough workforce in the work pool. Two, uh, we're going to have tremendous amount. We have going to have a tsunami of people entering the age society. For example, I will be 60 in, in nine years. So in nine years from now, uh, well, starting from the eighth or seventh year from now, uh, we're going to have about a million people plus entering the 60s, in the 60s and a million and a million every year, every year, every year. And that means more and more burdened on the, the social welfare that looks after the old people mm -hmm. and less and less people putting money into the system in terms of, uh, in, in term of taxes. So when we have less people working, we have less people paying tax. Uh, and that is really worrying because like last year, according to the Internal Revenue Service, out of 66 million people population in Thailand, only 11 million registered to be a taxpayer. And oh. out of that, 
out of that 11 million people, only 4.5 million people actually pay taxes. Mm. So as of now, as of now, we have less than 10% of people paying taxes in Thailand. Um, well, that's not including the companies and, uh, and, and corporations, but I'm talking about as an individual, that's less than 10% today. So mm. as the workforce is shrinking, we're going to have less and less people putting money into the system. And if people continue to ask for an increase in the uh, uh, social welfare, um, you know, all across the board, welfare, et cetera, et cetera, we are going to have a meltdown of the system. It's going to go bankrupt. Oh, you're talk, talk, talking about a meltdown. Yes, in our social security system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, how are you going to step by step solve this very big problem and it's not only thailand i think it is a global issue as well but ours seems to be we have, we are not quite prepared for that i, I mean no, we, we're not government have been talking about it every government in the past 10 years has been talking about it but i do not see any real concrete substantial policy that could really really tackle this this time bomb Correct. Well, I don't want to point fingers at anyone because at this point in time, there is no point at all to blame uh, this people or that people. But what I'm saying is that now is the time that everyone, and I'm talking about the government agencies, all 20 ministries, including the private sectors, as well as all the people in Thailand, we really need to work together this time. Otherwise, in 10 years, oh, well, those who are still alive is going to be in a lot of trouble. For example, um, we had a big workshop on uh, Thursday, the 7th of March. And from that workshop, we well, thanks to the prime minister, he, he made sure that we had representatives from all the ministries uh, coming and joined us to find a solution. We work in five pillars. The first pillars, we need to focus on people within the working age. We need to strengthen their ability to survive in today's world in terms of uh, job creativity, in terms of um, uh, make sure that they plan to getting old. I mean, when, when you have to plan to get old. You cannot plan when you are old. You right. have to plan before getting in. Uh, talking about the savings, they need to know about the future jobs. We need to build them hope that you know they can survive in the community. And the second group of uh, the second pillar we talked about was develop the young, the children. Because as we have less and less children in Thailand, we need to make sure that they are of the highest quality. And when we talk about quality, we are talking about both mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. Physically, we need to look at the, the, the sports. We need to look at the healthcare. And when we talk about mentally, we talk about the education system. Mm -hmm. um, and the third group of people we talk about is the old people. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, people over 60s today are different from people over 60s, 50 years ago. Uh, because thanks to the Ministry of Public Health, uh, the health and the well-being of our older people, they're getting stronger, they're getting younger and younger every year. Live so long. we need to live, live longer. Long. But then we, and, we, and we become more expensive when we live longer, <laughs> right? Well, not necessarily, because look at you, for example, you keep active, you are very healthy, and you will not be the burden on the country's budget on healthcare. Okay. So we we need to make sure that the old people stays active. We mm -hmm. need them to be sociable because we don't want them to be stuck at home or stuck in bed. That would be a big burden to our country's budget. So we need to make sure that we have active aging. Silver economy needs to come in. We need to empower older people and make sure that they because we have less and less people in the working age. We need to utilize what we have left and old people are amongst those. I mean, 60 to 70s are still workable. Mm -hmm. um, I think you are an excellent example of an active aging. Uh, you're healthy, you are very active, both physically and mentally. So you are a wonderful example of, of what we need today from older people. And um, the third group, fourth group of people, we are talking about people with disabilities. Now, we need to really empower them. I've been working with them for a long time, not just as a minister, but my family personally, as a political party. We've been working with people with disabilities for a long time. And one thing I realized is that 
they are superheroes. It is more than we do. And we need to utilize those. We need to capture those abilities and turn them into productivity. Because by doing so, uh, they would rely less and less on the social welfare. I'm talking about not just the people with disabilities, but older people as well. If you keep older people active, if you introduce them back into the workforce, not only they will be able to uh, be a less of a burden to the society, less of a burden to the social welfare, but they would be able to create uh, income for themselves. They would be able to sustain themselves in the society. And then the fifth pillar that we talked about is the overall ecology of our society. Because when we talk about increasing the number of population, it's not just about to have an urge to have a family. Because Thai, Thai people nowadays, especially Gen Y, Gen Z, and Gen Alpha, we do, they do not have problems about fertility. They no. have problems about the urge to have babies. They do not want to have the babies. Because why? They feel that it's a burden. Yeah. Um, people of, of, of current generation, Gen Y, Gen Z, and Gen Alpha, they look at the word family value totally different from what you and I perceive. Um, Gen, Gen X and Gen Baby Boomer, we look at families as an energy source. Mm -hmm. After a long day of work, you come home, you recharge, you know, like an EV, you yeah. recharge yourself and get ready for the next day of work. They are the power source of us. But today's generations, they look at family as a burden, as when you come home, you get drained. They're a burden, it's expensive. And, you know, let alone looking after the babies, they can't even looking after themselves yet. So sure. they don't want to have families. So they need to feel that they have hope. They need to feel the support that the government, the public, the society gives them. So mm -hmm. the problem of low fertility is not about the fertility itself. It's about the quality of the society that we have that would enable them to live a sustainable family and raise kids, basically. They, this particular generation, some people call them a, the sandwich generation because they have to take care of their own children and also their parents. Because yes. if they live longer, they will still be there when they have children. So this generation will have to work harder, much harder than the previous generation in surviving because they have to take care of the parents and the children or at the same time, why the social network is getting less shrinking all the time. The ability to earn may be, you know, uncertain. It's less and less. Yeah, sure. less, and less. So this is particularly worrying for a lot of people. I couldn't agree more. That is why the generations today, Gen Y, Gen Z, they, they feel that, you know, they have to look after parents. So if they have to choose between parents and their babies, well, let's not have babies. Let's look after our mom and dad first, you mm -hmm. know, or even uh, grandparents and, uh, or even a family. A lot of people want to stay single uh, as of today. Uh, and, and that's just really worrying because as the number of older people increases and the number of working age is decreasing um, the number of older people that needs the younger generation to sustain them um, okay let me rephrase it i'm sorry in about some um, 10 years 20 years ago in order to support one older person you need about six uh, working age people to support them so it's like one to six but today it reduced from one to six to one to about two and a half to three so that means people today of the working age, three of them is supporting one older person. Mm -hmm. So that means 20 years, over the period of 20 years, the workload of the working group, the working age has doubled from, you know, from six to one down to three to one. And in the future, it's going to go down to two to one. And eventually it's going to go on why they are so discouraged from having uh, babies. Mm -hmm. Now, five pillars or five groups of people that you have to tend to, how, as a government or as a minister, how do you propose to work on the solutions? It has to be a 
concerted efforts, not just the Ministry of Social Development and Human Security, not just the Ministry of Public Health, not just the Ministry of Education, but I think the question today is what makes the newer generation wants to have a family and babies? Mm -hmm. It's not just throwing money at them. Some oh. people said, oh, why don't you give them, I don't know, a uh, uh, 100,000 baht for a baby? Then if you have three babies, three children, then you have 300,000 baht. Mm -hmm. I think money itself is, does, will not solve the problem because, I mean, 100,000 baht nowadays, it doesn't last that long at all. Mm -hmm. I think we need to ask the newer generations that in order for you to live in a society, what qualifies as a sustainable and a suitable society for you? Right. They, would probably, they would probably talk about quality education. They are probably talking about uh, affordable housing. Mm -hmm. They will probably talk about the uh, universal design that everyone can access, you know, older people, um, people with disabilities, uh, as well as normal people. They would need to look at the safety and security of everyday life. They'll probably look at the problem about drugs that is so, is everywhere, uh, not just in Thailand, but it's increasingly alarming. They probably need to look at the quality of work, quality of life. So these attributes, once you have managed to tick off all of them, mm -hmm. they will feel that, oh, they have the hope. They have the, uh, they feel comfortable living in a society so much that, okay, I think I want to have a wife. Oh. And okay, I want to have a baby. Mm -hmm. um, take, for instance, the, uh, the, the children's center nowadays. In the past, they start accepting kids, children, at about from three years old onward. Um, lately, uh, the Minister of Public Health, thanks to them, have reduced the age from three years old down to six months old. Mm -hmm. But then, according to that process, I, I asked, I, well, I kindly asked the Minister of Public Health, why are you reduce to just six months? Go all the way down to three months. Yeah. Why, why three months? Because the current Labor Act, Labor Act in Thailand would allow maternity leave of 98 days. 98 days, yeah. So your baby would be three months old. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened on day 99? You would need somewhere to put your baby. Mm -hmm. So if the government provides a children's center that would be able to look after children from the age of three months onward, yes. then the, 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 new, the, 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 well, the newer generations, the young, the young ones, won't feel the need to leave their newborn babies with grandparents and create even more problems. So these are a few of the supports that every single ministry needs to work together. Uh, just uh, the quality of education, uh, public transport, uh, the quality of environment, um, the welfare on, in, and under my ministry's purview. Everyone, every single ministry has responsibilities. Do the best of your job and that would create a sustainable and a quality society where people would feel more comfortable to have families and offsprings. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, I saw that you had this workshop with the World Bank, with Chulalongkorn University, and you're planning to move together with various agencies or together. How, yes. How do you proceed from here now? NGOs also? NGOs? Yes, yes. Um, during our workshop, we, uh, well, we had uh, attendance from everyone, not just domestic. We had international organizations as well, like you mentioned, World Bank, uh, WHO, the World Health Organization. We had uh, uh, as attendance from UNDP, United Nations Development Program, UN Women, um, UNICEF, uh, UN Habitat, uh, mm -hmm. or even UN Volunteers. And all of them are so eager to, uh, to share with us their mm -hmm. knowledge and their expertise, because they have been working with many countries around the world tackling this problem. And each country will have different um, complexities and uh, restrictions, and they would be willing to share with us their, their knowledge and see how we could adapt various uh, measures from different countries. But the questions that a lot of them are raising, just similar to what you mentioned just now, what will we do from now on? How, how, how we are going to move forward? Well, for start, um, at the end of this month or the beginning of April, 
I'm going to submit a white paper report to the cabinet for approval. Mm -hmm. Now, this white paper, it's, it's uh, like a blueprint mm -hmm. from the voices from everyone, from the uh, private sectors, from NGOs, from government authorities, from everyone, so that this white paper uh, mm -hmm. would be a guideline, not a master plan, but would be a guideline for all the government uh, ministries to really shift up in their gears how to head towards the word sustainable society and a and providing people with a quality of life. Mm -hmm. So, like I mentioned earlier, not just Ministry of Social Development and Public Health, uh, and, and I'm sorry, and, and um, Human Security, uh, we have a huge task ahead of us, how to improve the quality of healthcare, looking after older people, um, empower the people with disabilities, gender equality, et cetera, et cetera. And other ministries, such as education, they would really need to work on improving, uh, you know, the, the, the PISA score, for example. Ministry of Transport would certainly need to look at the public transport as a whole to make sure that it reduces the burden of people driving to work every day, for example. Uh, Ministry of Public Health, looking after the social welfare um, and, and, you know, the preventive medication, preventive healthcare, for example. So every single one of us, has to look at this uh, white paper report and mm -hmm. transfer it into a master plan and to action plan. Mm -hmm. Would you be proposing specific action plans in your white paper to the cabinet? Well, I cannot uh, create an action plan on the other's behalf. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I, I don't dare give um, other ministries or my colleagues uh, an action plan. Uh, I would certainly uh, provide them with our action plan, what we are planning to do. For example, since the six month period that I've been working in the ministry, uh, now I am changing the attitude of the ministry from social workers. We are not a charity worker. We need to empower people. We need to build capacities for people. We need to enable them to, to coexist with one another, with their own ability. We need to teach them how to earn money, not just give them money for uh, nothing. Right. Because uh, there is no such thing as free lunch in life. So if you want money, you need to work for it. And, um, you know, we will be helping you along the way to improve your capacities and empower you to, to earn more money. Mm -hmm. Education for the young ch children also is very important because the quality of education is quite a problem nowadays at the same time we need more qualified people in the workforce while being disrupted by technology we're talking about people losing jobs because ai could replace a lot of jobs in the future now you you face a more complex issue rather than just finding jobs for people you have to find the right jobs for the right people with the right skills. So you need to talk about reskilling, upskilling. Up, upskilling, yes. Or, provide, or providing new skills. And that, that is another challenge for you, right? I couldn't agree more. We are not talking about educating young people anymore. We are talking about educating people like myself or even you. Uh, uh, it's like a lifelong learning. We need to learn new technologies. Um, uh, there has been a proposal of the three groups of generations, three generation school, where well, the Gen Y, I'm, I'm sorry, not Gen Y, but the Gen Z and the Gen Alpha uh, mm -hmm. would go through the normal education system and then upskill and reskill the working group of people like me, myself, Gen X, mm -hmm. and also teaching the older people like in the uh, baby boomer generation, new yeah. technologies so that they will not be conned by the, uh, the, the conned artists through the scammers and etc so by introducing these three generations into an educational institution it would enable all three of the generations to understand one another yeah. gen baby boomer would probably understand gen alpha how they think uh, mm -hmm. gen z would probably understand gen x better how we think and by doing this it would enable people to go through the lifelong learning process while understanding each generation's the reasons behind that logic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I just saw that in Singapore, the new budget for 2024, 
they have this credit given to everyone over 40 years old to go and find a new skill, to take a new course, to learn skills that are still needed or will be needed in the future. Are you going to propose a similar project where people can, you know, use the credit the government gives to learn new technologies, get a new certificate on certain skills that do not exist at the moment? I think you and I watched the same clip <laughs> from the, uh, the Singaporean uh, member of parliament saying in the par parliament. I, yeah. I totally agree with the gentleman. He has a wonderful idea. And I think it is an extremely uh, a good idea to, to do so because everyone needs to learn what is going on in the world right now. Technologies, especially the older people, because at the moment, the con artists, the call centers, they have been you know, conning people over, right. we're talking about tens of billions of baht over the years. And uh, by upskilling and reskilling and re-educates all the people, not just the younger ones, but people of my age and the older people, it would preventing them from being the victim and also enable them to see, well, new opportunities because the older people, they are old, but they're not out. No. I always say this, old, but not out. They have the physical ability. They have experiences like you yourself. You have tremendous amount of knowledge inside your head. You're like a walking encyclopedia. So, so, so your wisdom is so valuable that mm -hmm. if applied to new technologies, I'm mm -hmm. sure that older people would find a more creative way of doing things and, and, and be able to blend in perfectly with the newer, uh, with the newer technologies in our, in our current society. So I think it's a very good idea. And uh, if, avail I mean, if opportunities arises, I will certainly raise the, uh, the, the issue about uh, such funding. Mm -hmm. So it is a very big challenge for you and the whole government. And it's not going to just rely on what any particular ministry or any government agency. In fact, the private no. sector, how are you going to recruit or to engage the private sector in helping to resolve this national crisis? I think this, this population crisis is truly a national crisis because not just the government sectors that will be hit, the private sectors will significantly be hit as well. Workforce, um, Thailand is relying heavily on tourism industry, on the service industry, and those service industries cannot be replaced by AI. Mm -hmm. Service in, I mean, our world renowned Thai touch mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Thai hospitality will not be able to be replaced by AI. Human touch is the most important thing. And if you have less and less people in the working age, where mm -hmm. are you going to find those Thai touch? Where mm -hmm. are you going to give, well, our, the customers and visitors those, those Thai hospitality? So the working well, I'm sorry, the private sectors really need to step up their games as well as the government sectors because the government will be directly hit because productivity will drop, um, our GDP will drop, our demand and supply will certainly go down and would be stuck in the medium income bracket. We, we will not be able to move on. So, uh, for example, the private sectors, one, for, uh, I would, uh, well, let's say one example is create a, a facility where mother could bring her child to a, an office, for example, uh, a, a maternity room, for example. Care, um, the office must have a daycare center somewhere. That is the word, exactly. Or even maybe uh, an older, you know, adult care center, senior people care center. Uh, one day you bring your mom and dad along to work and, and you know, look after at the workplace, for example. Yeah, that would be something very new in Thailand, but it it will come to pass soon sooner than every one of us think and and everyone needs to chip in and work together because by providing these support it would enable the working age group of people the the, the well it will give them the peace of mind that oh if i have a family yes. if i have a child you know my boss would support me my you know my friends would support me i'm not alone and then, you know, they would have the urge to have babies. Mm -hmm. And I think the age of 
uh, when we're talking about all across the board welfare, mm -hmm. um, I think we really need to rethink that word. We do not have the luxury in terms of manpower to produce enough productivity or taxes to yeah. cover everyone. So yeah. we need to have the welfare system that is would be would enable everyone to live equally in the society. But it doesn't mean give everyone of the same amount. It's not an equal uh, opportunity. It has to be equitable, not only equal. Mm. Exactly. That is the that is a key word. And unfortunately, nowadays everyone is asking for well equal social welfare. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think that is possible at, with our current income at the moment. Right. And if you talk about funding, you may find the private sector playing a more important role than the government in terms of providing funding to reskill their workers or to upskill their workers because they will feel the need. If the government has the right policy, if there's tax advantages for them to provide their workers with special skill training, educational upgrade. I couldn't agree more because uh, some might argue that, uh, you know, providing them with a tax incentive would reduce the government's income even more. But I beg to differ because by giving them the tax incentive, the private sectors would upskill and reskill their, uh, their employees. And yeah. in turn, the employees would be able to create uh, much more income for the company and hence the taxes and the sure. government would get the income from you know from from those taxes from the companies sure. sure and we have not even mentioned the fact that this whole population crisis if not resolved or prevented or handled properly will affect not only the econ economy also but also the whole society the word security it's not only on the social or economic side, but also national security as well. Because you don't want a society that is, that is split up, broken up, because they cannot afford to live comfortably. The old people and the young people are fighting. The generation gap grows. The government cannot uh, make sure the people are happy. And then you have a society that is in trouble. Right. I think I, I totally agree because as our ministry is emphasizing right now is that what we are saying is that family institution in Thailand is our last shred of hope in holding this country together by cre by creating a the strength within the family. For example, uh, if we have one day a week or even half a day a week where family, each member of the family gets together have a meal, and maybe you leave your, your uh, IT gadgets aside, your phones, your tablets aside, and no really sit. Yeah, no device exactly. on the, the dinner table, no devices. Everyone, that, <laughs> you, that's like weapons, you know, you collect the weapons in front of the door. You know, all iPhones, uh, cell phones are collected before you enter the house. <laughs> That is what I do with my, my children nowadays. Yeah. When, when we sit down together, I would collect uh, their, self, their, their mobile phones. Uh, the only person that I couldn't collect, uh, well, the only person I couldn't confiscate a phone from is my wife, really, because she's got a very important work to do. So uh, right. respecting her on that part. But by, by you know, taking away this element, we would be able to sit face to face and asking questions like, how's your day, my dear? You know, are you tired? Um, how's the school? Um, how's your work? You know, yeah. keep going. You know, we are support. You always have our support. You know, these nice and encouraging phrases needs to be said much more. Yeah. And, and when family comes together and the family core value in Thailand is being restored, mm -hmm. I think that would build a more uh, sustainable and the strength for the society. It would also create a barrier for the children against uh, things like drugs, yeah. gambling, yeah. And, and bullying, you know, the, the domestic violence as well. Or oh, depression, which is quite, exactly. quite widespread these days. You know. I, I, you know, I'd like to propose maybe, you know, have a Sunday for five hours, we turn off the national grid on the uh, IT, on turn off the internet for half a day, for example. 
I'm sure the whole country is going to go into chaos. But um, uh, there's a movie called Ready Player One. I'm not sure if uh, any of the audience get to see it. It, it talks about a far future where mm -hmm. everyone lives in virtual reality. You put on the goggles and you live in a virtual world. And um, at the end of the movie, uh, the, the, the main character won the whole series, won the game. And he dictates his term that for seven days a week, he needs to have, I think, a Thursday and a Sunday where the whole world is going to be unplugged. Unplugged. And, yes. And people need to communicate and talk face to face and have human interactions. Uh, I think eventually that's what we need to bring the family closer together. I totally agree. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Minister Warawood. I hope uh, we can continue this discussion when you have some progress made along the way after you have submitted the white paper to the cabinet and how as a nation we can work together, private sector, government, NGOs, old people, working people and young people. Mm -hmm. It would be my pleasure to be back here again, Cap. Thank, Thank you. you so much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. สวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับขอบคุณครับ